There guys, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today we're back on Space Engineers and what I thought I'd show you today is how to build a large grid rover. So beneath me I have a rover that I built a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is called the Nomad. Uh, this is basically designed as a cargo rover. So I'll just go you through a couple of uh, things that I use to um, build this rover. Some like kind of design principles I would say. So the first thing we're going to cover is um, the weight or rather the weight distribution of the rover. So one of the most important things I think with a rover is um, its stability um, because there's no good having a rover that's constantly flipping and you know spinning around and doing all sorts of crazy things. So one of the main things that we're going to use to determine the stability of the rover is going into your K menu, then go to info, and what we're going to do is we want to show the center of mass. Um, and I think, and then if we move in closer, you can see that little point there. So that shows us where the center of mass is. So it's about there on the rover. So it's about there. So basically what we want the center of mass to do is we want that to be as low to the ground as possible. So one of the ways that we can do that is we can build the heaviest blocks towards the bottom of the rover. So in this particular rover what I've done is I've put two large cargo containers in it for obviously cargo storage. And I've put those two large cargo containers on the bottom most part of the rover. Um, and I've also done the same for the assemblers and I've also done the same for the refinery Well at least as low as I can get them and you can see here. I've got a couple of gyroscopes um, And I'll explain why they're there a little bit later But there again, they're a block that's very heavy and I've tried to keep them as low down to the ground as possible And I've put them at the front to try and shift a bit of the weight a little bit forward Another thing that you can do to try and evenly distribute the weight against your rover is trying to build it out of um, lighter materials. So some of the blocks in the game are lighter than others. Obviously heavy armor blocks are the heaviest or some of the heaviest blocks in the game. And then you have light armor blocks, um, you know, you have blast doors, you have things like interior blocks. But interior blocks are really good in the sense where they're actually really, really light. So if you want to save a little bit of weight in your rover, then that's one way to do it, is by making some of the internal walls and internal flooring out of in interior blocks. Um, and that'll definitely help keep the weight down. So when it's all said and done, this particular rover here weighs about 950,000 kilos. Um, and this rover has eight wheels. So I've found with eight wheels and that amount of weight, it's quite a capable rover without having to add thrusters to it. Once you start getting up around the two million kilogram mark with a rover with eight wheels, I've found that it does kind of struggle to get up hills. Um, once you get to around about the three million kilo mark, um, then it's pretty much useless at trying to get up hills. So once you get to that point, you probably need to consider adding more wheels um, if you don't have thrusters available to you. So what I've done on this rover is I've actually added a couple of thrusters to the back of the rover just to help give it a push. Um, because when it's fully loaded with 3 million kilos worth of ore, um, well, its total weight is 3 million kilos, then those thrusters definitely help push it along. And you can get up to speeds of 80 meters per second, no problem. Um, so yeah, uh, now when we're talking about stability as well, um, and I'll get back to the gyroscopes that we've seen at the front here. Um, gyroscopes help with stability quite a bit on a rover. Um, and I guess they help counteract phantom forces to an extent. And what I mean by phantom forces is like, you might have noticed a rover when you uh, jump it up into the air, it starts doing crazy spins and all that sort of stuff. So the gyroscopes try and they definitely help alleviate that a little bit. 
Um, but the main reason why they're there is when you do a jump, um, then you have some control over the rover when it's in midair. Um, if you if you do a jump and you don't have any gyroscopes, then basically when you left that jump, that's where your rover is staying. And if if your rover decides to do a backflip in the middle of your jump, then chances are it's going to land on its roof. Whereas if you have some gyroscopes installed, then you can kind of counteract that. You can tilt this way, tilt that way, go up and down, and you can counteract any any forces or any bad jumping, I would say. <laughs> so yeah, um, and also when it comes to the stability of your rover, uh, you want to think about its footprint. So this rover is, uh, what, it's only what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks wide. No, sorry, five blocks wide. So yeah, this this rover is only five blocks wide. Um, obviously, the wheels go out a lot further than that. Um, but the further apart you have the wheels, the more stable the rover is, but also the less ground clearance you have. So if you have a wheel way out there and a wheel way out there, then you come across the slightest bump, then the middle of your rover is going to, you know, come up against that bump and it's going to hit it. So the closer the wheels are together, the rougher the terrain you can go over, but also the most more unstable the rover is. So you kind of need to find that balance um, because as you can see, this height isn't really the greatest here. Um, so you kind of need to find a balance between stability and how much ground clearance you want the rover to have. And the same goes for the length as well. If you make your rover really short, um, you know, then it's just going to do weird things like do wheelies and stuff like that. But with large grid rovers, I don't think that's as much of a problem because they're just so big that they just can't do that. Um, but some of my small grid rovers can do that. They can do some wheelies. Um, all right, so now that we've covered stability and weight, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll move on to the wheels. So obviously the wheels are the most important part of a rover. Um, and my usage of rovers has sort of taught me that it's not a matter of if the wheels get damaged, but rather when. So every time I'm using my rover, um, occasionally I'll come across one of the wheels, I'll check, check its health. And I'll see that it's actually damaged. Um, obviously, none of these are damaged yet. So, I've managed to catch all these wheels out before they've completely damaged themselves and blown up, and I've lost a wheel. Um, but you want to always kind of prepare for the fact that you're going to lose a wheel. So, you might want to consider putting something like these jacking pistons here at the bottom. And what these do, these extend out, they lift the entire rover upwards, and they make the wheels go off the ground so that you can actually attach a wheel. Because if you're too close to the ground, then you can't attach a new wheel to the axle. So yeah, that allows you to do that. Or one of the other options you can do is um, you can try and put a welder very close to the wheel that fixes the wheel as it gets damaged. So that's another way to do it. But obviously adding welders really close to the wheel adds weight and it's very complicated to plumb them in. So, yeah, there is that. So there's advantages and disadvantages to both systems. Um, this system is probably not that stable. So with this system, you kind of need to, you know, if you do get lose a wheel in a precarious position, you kind of need to find a flat space where you can actually use these jacks. Otherwise, you, you just can't use them, um, especially on a so slope, because the whole rover is just going to tip over. So... Yeah, sometimes you might actually need to get out and repair the wheel manually in those types of scenarios. Um, yeah, um, the second thing you might want to consider as well, or one of the other things you might want to consider, sorry, is um, power on the rover. Now, rovers are quite good in the sense where they don't use a lot of power to actually travel. Um, that being said, my rover includes thrusters, so it uses a bit more power than what a regular rover with just wheels would. But I only have eight batteries on this rover, eight large grid batteries, and I could probably get away with less 
um, but they're more there for you know to have a bit of a, a buffer I would say so these batteries are plenty powerful enough to power these thrusters so you don't need a ton of batteries in this and again a battery is a heavy module or a heavy block so you, you kind of want to put that as low to the ground as possible um, if your center of gravity ends up way too high like it ends up way up here then your rover is just going to be flipping all over the place and it's it's just going to be absolutely useless so yeah there is that um, now when it comes to reactors um, unless you have an absolutely ginormous rover then large grid reactors you don't really need them this particular rover only uses two small grid reactors and the only time I ever use them is when I have a ship or a couple of ships docked on the back and I want to charge the batteries on them really fast but I don't want to drain the batteries in the rover itself so yeah there is that now if you're like me and you like to play with a skybox mod um, that makes your world really dark um, then you might want to consider some lights and also since the new weather update um, has been introduced uh, lighting is now more important than what it used to be in the game so you definitely want to consider having some spotlights um, what I've done in the later version of this is I've actually put these spotlights on a hinge and I've directed them probably like 22 and a half degrees down to the floor so that I have a nice little lit up area right in front of where I'm driving so yeah there is that um, so one of the other things with a rover is transporting materials and ores and all that sort of stuff on and off the rover so in other words connectors so with this particular rover I've put a connector on the bottom um, and I basically in one of my bases I have a setup where a piston comes up and connects to said connector and I have a camera in here to try and line it up but I have found this quite a difficult thing to do actually line up this um, with the piston and it's a very trial and error approach um, because the camera doesn't give you a good view so you could alternatively alternatively try and change the position of the camera so you get a better view of where the rover is but I've found having this connector at the back is probably one of the easiest um, methods to connect to the rover because you can actually see the connector when you're driving so it's much easier to line it up with the connector on your base um, another thing to consider when you're designing your rover is if this is a rover that's designed for a, a world without jetpacks or let's say you're silly like me and you run out of um, hydrogen all the time then you might want to consider an alternative access method to your rover so obviously you see me flying around and I can access the rover from there but what I'm actually going to do here is we will bring down the elevator so we'll just reverse this let's give you a quick look at the elevator so basically the elevator is buried one dot uh, one block deep up in there and it basically just extends down and I have a couple of upside down catwalks attached to that some stairs and a button panel and I've used the button panel as a mounting point for this catwalk here and then obviously on the button panel I've just put some random things like you know the uh, angle of the angle of, that the rovers on the gravity that we're sitting on and the time uh, basically it says that I've spent too much time in space engineers right so one of the other things that we might want to have a look at is setting up the hotbar for our rover so if we head on into the cockpit <coughs> I'll just show you a couple of handy things that you can set up on your hotbar <coughs> and also in the cockpit of your, hot, of your rover you can do things like this and you can put in some clear LCDs um, one with your speed one with your um, oh, I don't know what they call that uh, your angles I guess one with the fuel and whatever you might want to put put there um, now moving back to the so actually so we'll just bring up this elevator again so we'll reverse this so moving on to the hotbar right when we look at the hotbar 
Now, one of the biggest issues with Rovers that I found, um, and took me a little little bit to figure figure this out, but I kept having this problem where I was trying to park the Rover, but every time I'd press the P key, then every ship that I had disconnect or connected to the Rover would then disconnect. So, because P is also the button that you use to disconnect all connectors on the grid. So, one of the ways that you can get around this is in the hotbar, you can actually add a shortcut for your handbrake. So, what you want to do is you want to go into your G menu. You want to find your cockpit. So, hang on a sec. Let me see if I can find this. There we go. You want to right click on your cockpit. And you want to select um, handbrake on and off. So you select that, and then it will show up on the hot bar as this. And then all you need to do is just press the one key, and then you can lock and unlock the rover. <coughs> one of the other things that's really handy to have on the hot bar is the being able to adjust the wheel strength. So you can see here I have lower the strength of the suspension and increase the strength of suspension and then on the third hot bar I also have well I did have increase the height and lower the height of the rover because these are the things you might want to use um, when you're you know trying to line up your rover to a connector or you know you're trying to clear some excess terrain or something like that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through a couple of driving tips with the rover as well so one of the things I noticed when driving a rover is that when you're going in a straight line like this then everything works quite well the rover will accelerate and actually what we'll do is we'll, we'll just quickly go up this jump and I'll show you the effect that um, gyroscopes have so you can see here that the rover's airborne and we have a bit of control when it's in mid-air so well, we bottomed out and we can sort of control the rover slam on the brakes here a bit so one thing that I found when I was driving rovers around is that when you have the rover at full lock like you have all the wheels turning then it accelerates very poorly so if you're trying to traverse terrain and you find that the rover is not moving as much as what it should then just try and straighten up the wheels and then just try and gradually turn around something or alternatively what you can do is you can decrease the amount of wheels that turn on the rover so instead of having six wheels that turn, I could change this to the front wheels and the rear wheels only. Um, and that would definitely help it turn. Um, and one of the other things that we could do as well is reduce the steering angle of the wheels. Um, so there is that. All right, so yeah, I think that's about it for this video. Um, if there's anything more you guys would like to see on uh, rovers or anything else in space engineers then please let me know in the comments below um, thanks very much for watching the video I hope it was helpful to you and definitely consider subscribing to the channel um, I'm definitely going to try and release content on more of a weekly schedule so I'll try and do it every Saturday and Friday night and um, I may even start a series soon so yeah I hope to see you guys in the, in the next video Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.